Okay, today I'm going to show you how to paint this wood plaque or panel. Okay, this is a 9 by 12. Um, I do have a pattern that is available. <coughs> Excuse me. Or you can just draw it on with chalk. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is to put this background in uh, to give it kind of a wood grain uh, type look. So we're going to use some dark brown. And these are multi-surface paints and titanium white, so any brown and white would work. I've got my foam paper plate, and I'm going to put some of these colors out. Multi-surface paint uh, means just what it says. Uh, it can be used on any surface. Leather wood has the little... Uh, tab at the top that says uh, wood, glass, metal, so pretty much any type of surface. It has a sealer in it, which is great. Um, so if you're going to put it outside, it'll be nice and sealed. Okay, I'm going to take one of the sponge painters and I'm just going to put a little bit of water on the top of that to prepare the sponge and then I'm going to pick up some white and a little bit of brown and I'm just going to go with the length of the board and putting the background on gives you um, it seals that wood and makes it easier to paint on when we do the decoration So depending on what size your wood is, just stay with the grain. And then what I have done is, let me get some more white out, um, come down and make like some boards. A little bit more brown. And then you can and then kind of blend that in a little bit. So push harder when you've got that dark or the light. Okay. So it really depends on if you want that look or not. You could put a uh, solid color in the background. The sponge painters are just easy way to achieve a background for sure okay so now if I want um, some knot holes so I'm going to grab a little bit more of the brown and I'm just going to kind of streak it and kind of make that U shape And if you want um, yours to have a little more white, you can stroke that white in stronger. It's just to give it an illusion. Okay. All right, when you're done with your sponge, whatever type of sponge you're using, put it in water until you can get it cleaned out so that it won't... Um, harden in there. Okay, so the next thing I did was I put a um, stencil in the background in these corners. So let me get my stencil. You could use any stencil of any kind. So this is the one I'm using, and I honestly don't remember. 
it is a plaid stencil but I don't know the name of it I have taped it off um, I used it on the fabric piece uh, so I'm gonna use the same section of it here so just line up your corner and then check how far in you are from the edges and I have a little bit of painters tape on mine that way it's easy to um, adhere it and it won't lift that paint off make sure you have some white out okay and again I should have kept my painter sponge out but anyway we've got another one okay so what dampen your sponge pick up some of that white and then I like to tap it kind of pounce it in make sure you stay within your stencil don't go out on an area that you don't want it or that's not protected with tape so this is just you know another way to use you could put this whole stencil in the middle and then do your design that would look pretty too okay so I'm gonna lift this one and then I'm gonna go to the other corner and do the same thing line up my corner check how far in secure the tape now when you're done with the stencil make sure you go rinse it off um, like a kitchen sprayer is a good way to get them fairly clean if you can't get to it right away if you have a large bucket or a container uh, you could drop it in there it's not going to hurt it okay all right so we'll let that dry for a minute and I'll be right back okay now that this is dry you can do one of two things you can uh, take the pattern and then what you can do is get um, some graphite transfer paper. This is white or Sorel. There's one side that's shiny and one that's dull. You would want the shiny side down. And then you can just take like the handle of a brush and trace over. You can see there's a line that comes out. I'm just gonna sketch this on but that's how you can transfer. Um, you could do it with a color of, of transfer paper that's gonna show on top of what you've got. There's um, the black and the white as far as the graphite, and Sorel comes in multiple uh, colors. Okay, so I'm gonna just look at my pattern, and this is how I did the original one, was I just decided I wanted a flower here and how big it's going to be. So you can see that is about the size of the chog. Okay. Then what I do is I make my center. Okay. And I'm going to try to do this. I should have done it down here on this one for you. Hold on. Let me get this one. So what I generally do when I'm sketching something out is I make what I call a donut. And let's come in a little closer. Okay. And then I do a Y. So now you have two large sections and a small section. So if you divide the large sections in half, now you have, that one's a little short, uh, five petals. Okay, so imagine that these are petals now and they're perfectly spaced. So that's how I come up with, and it gives, gives me a guide. Uh, sometimes I'll just, you know, draw the Y and do it like that and go if I don't if I'm not restricted to a size okay um, we've got a large leaf here there's one here and then we've got a bud 
there and then I've got one that comes up here large leaf here I'm not gonna worry about the smaller leaves um, let me push this over okay then I've got um, a flower up here that's a little bit smaller once again make your center that's just an easy way that'll be for our outside petals and then we'll layer the other ones on top of that and then here's a bud we've got a large leaf here and here and then I may change it up I mean sometimes when I paint I don't do the same thing uh, twice so I just kind of whatever feels good is what I do okay all right so I'm gonna back and uh, now I'll leave the camera the where it's at okay so maybe just a little bit okay so I'm gonna use um, apple red and some black Uh, let's do our leaves first though. So the flower is going to be apple red and licorice black and then I like to use uh, citrus and sap green. Sorry I've got paint on there uh, for my leaves. So let's put in the larger leaves. We can do the smaller leaves later as fillers. Um, if you have some floating uh, medium, you might need some of that if the wood is a little dry. I'll put some out of here on my palette just in case. Okay. So I used the th three quarter inch flat and then I think this is like a 16 or a 12 it's about a half an inch across is what it is and then you need to have um, I use the half inch scruffy brush also always dampen your brush first then flat it out on a paper towel that just kind of conditions the bristles okay all right so we're gonna load our brush we're gonna pick up mostly the citrus green to start with and work it in and then I'm just gonna go over here and grab a little bit of that sap on one side okay so you've got it worked in just real quickly back and forth blends those colors um, on the original, I did some leaves with the dark to the center, some leaves um, I did the dark to the outside. So it's your choice. Uh, you can change it up a little bit as you're going. Okay, so I like to uh, pull the first stroke towards me. So I'm going to put the brush down and kind of start it. And then you're just doing like a M stroke or a wiggle. It's a, basically a closed C stroke um, is what we call it uh, in the ceramic world. I'm going to grab some more, flip the brush over so my dark is to the center now, start that brush, go out, and then come in. Do you see that C? Out and come in. And you just do it real quickly and then come off that chisel edge and pull your center vein in. All right, let's go over here. And I did one with the uh, dark to the outside, so same thing. Work it in. Okay, I can tell that my brush is dragging. So I'm gonna dip into a little bit of medium. 
and work that into the brush and let's start that one again. That's the nice thing about the multi-surface is you can go right over what you've done. It's getting a little dry, that's why I'm slowing down. And then I'm gonna take the dark. I don't have enough on there. Oops, I got a hair. Sorry about that. And pull that center vein in. Okay. Reload. And then I can do the light to the outside on this one. Flip my brush over. Okay, um, I've got just one up here that's not a wavy or a ripply, it's just a just a press and slide and come off. It's like a larger leaf, but no wiggle to it. Grab a little bit of both of those on my brush, blend again. Let's see, this one will do the light green to the outside. Press, 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 and lift off. So what you're looking at is the center of my uh, leaf. You wanna make sure that this side of the brush stays with the center vein. This side follows or pivots as it goes around if you're trying to follow an exact pattern and slide off. And I'm going to pull a lighter vein on that one. Okay. All right. Then I had another one over here on the side. I had a small. This is another one of those. Just press and slide. You could also change brushes and come in there and do uh, the wiggle or the M stroke. And let's do this one. Originally I did the light color on the outside, but I'm gonna change it up just to make it stand out more here. And I can feel it's getting dry again. So I'm gonna touch into that medium. So when I touch into it, I'm just going straight down in it and then work it into the bristles. All right, so we're going dark to the outside. Yeah, that moves much easier. And sometimes I don't have enough on there to do my center vein. Okay, I think that that is all of the large leaves, okay? Although I had an empty space up here I didn't like. Um, originally so let's let's just add another uh, dark one up here and I'm not gonna do it very big I'm just gonna do a couple of waves grab some of that dark okay all right, so rinse that out of your brush. Because we want to go into the uh, reds and blacks now. We'll let that dry for just a little bit while I get stuff ready. Okay. So now we're going to use the apple red and licorice. We're going to do um, an outside uh, row of petals and then we'll do an inside row. There's only one set 
on the buds. Okay, so let's look at this. So you've got an outside set and then inside. So if you do all the outsides and your buds, then that has a little bit of time to dry and then you can do your inside ones. Okay. All right. So I've got the apple and the black and I'm gonna start by working that apple into my brush and then I'm just gonna grab just the edge. So it's mostly red, like three-fourths red and the rest black. Okay, I'm going to start on this guy here. It's doing the same ripple, M stroke, wiggle stroke, shell stroke, however you want to refer to it. Okay, so I'm going to start and then press, 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 and see it got dry. So this particular wood is very thin, uh, and boy, it just eats up the color. So I grabbed a little bit of the medium. Okay, so just work it before you start the next petal so that it's strong. Work, work, and I'm already getting dry. So I'm gonna have to add more medium. So I'm gonna suggest that you, um, you may need to Add that medium every time. Try to leave some of the area open in the middle for your center. Let's see, even that one got dry. But remember that the multi surface uh, does cover, so don't get too worried about it. And you can adjust how high you come out. To make it a little more interesting, just add that medium. Whoops, sorry, Got grabbed way too much there. Okay. All right. You got to be careful not to get too much of the uh, black, because boy, it can take over quickly. All right, um, I think these are dry enough. All right, here we go. Don't forget each time to do your medium. I did find out that if you put too much of the medium on, um, you can get these little bubbles, especially I did anyway on canvas. And I've noticed a little bit on here. Press, 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 and come off. And then what I just, I, since I mentioned bubbles, I've got some. Um, I just blowed on them and they went away. So sometimes that's, I find for me, it's because I've put too much of the medium in my brush. So those petals overlap. Okay. So press, 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 and come off. Okay, so there's a few bubbles. I'm gonna just blow those, and I'm not really worried about that being lighter because your next row of petals are going to cover that. See there, the next row covers it. All right, let's tackle the last one. And these are pretty good sized flowers. They're um, Gosh, how big are they? Four inches across, 
three and a half. So three and a half to four inches. That's why I'm using the larger brush. It makes it easier. It's gonna larger the brush you can use, the softer the look, the more ground you're gonna cover quicker. See, I'm going right over the top of my stencil. I'm not worried about that. It's just a background filler. needed a little bit of medium on there and I did not have it on there so I'm going to do that one over again okay much better okay and then we've got our buds so I'm just going to do three short little strokes reload okay this one Another one kind of sitting. direction on that one. Red is a little translucent sometimes. Um, so you may or may not need to go back over that. I don't remember if I did or not. So we'll put the other one up here. Okay, so this was the first one we did. It's still a little bit wet, so I'm gonna give it uh, a few minutes and then I'll come back because being translucent, that red color, I want to make sure those are dry. It's going to give us a better um, finish. Okay. Okay, we are going to do those inside petals now. So again, load your brush. Don't forget to add some of that uh, floating medium if you need it. And now we're going to go on the inside. So I like to start like in between where two of them are. And only go up high enough that, and like I said, you've got your pattern. You could wait until it completely dries. You could retrace that center, uh, inner set of petals on if you wanted. Or you can just go like I am and... Just stay on the inside and if you have some of that black showing behind it it'll give a little more definition you can always go back and float some of that in there if you needed to and you see that I've covered up my center now which is fine 
but at least it gives you a focal point uh, to look at. I did go back and put another coat on my buds and the reason I did that is because they are um, overlapping onto some of the stencil and they just looked a little translucent. Um, they're not going to have the two coats like we have on these. Okay, so we're going to do this bigger one. So I'm going to start here. Grab some of that medium. Just make sure you get enough red on there that you can see it. And if you need to go back over it, you can. Just keep turning your piece so that it's comfortable. All right, and let's go to the smaller one. I like to turn my work and keep going in the same direction. I know some people can reverse um, and go the opposite, and that's fine too. I just like to do it. Th this is my way. Okay. All right, so um, rinse your brush, and then we can, uh, while that's drying, we can put in some of those filler leaves the smaller ones so I'm going to switch and go down to um, that half inch size or you could use a 12 this is I think it's a 12 all right so I'm going to go back to my greens Okay, you can have your uh, pattern there, your picture there to look at. I'm just going to kind of wing it. So what I will do is I will put this one here so that you can see it. And then I'm going to do my strokes. Okay, so same thing again uh, that we did on our other leaves. Start with the citrus. Pretty much get that in there grab just a little bit on the corner of the sap so three-fourths of the brush with the citrus and then the sap on the corner i am going to touch into that medium because of it being so dry okay so i've got three here we're going to do what's called a wedge stroke which you press pull and then slide off that chisel edge and usually they're in clusters of three. Press, pull, and slide off. See, I'm not turning the brush. So this time, watch. And I'm always putting the dark towards uh, where the flower, where it grows from. Press, pull, and slide off. Then you can take uh, the dark end and you can pull in your center veins on your chisel edge. All right, then I had another set over here. So I'm going to do just the green ones. Uh, then I'll come back and I'll add some red on my brush and do some. So once again, press, pull, and slide off. Press, pull, and slide off. Press, pull, and slide. Pull in those center veins 
and you're ready to go to the next. We're going to go up here and put some. So I'm going to turn. Always reload. Add medium if you need to. Press, pull, and slide. Press, pull, and slide. Press, pull, and slide. Okay, so that's those. Can you see those up there? Okay. And then we've got um, a set over here. I'm trying to make it as much like the pattern as possible. Press, pull, and slide. Press, pull, and slide. Pull in your center veins. Okay, so that's those. Then I need to pull in that stem. But I'm going to put these in here first, and then we're going to overlap the stem on top of it. Whoops, I just got my dark color on my light side. Okay, so I'm going to pull these, press, pull, and slide, press, pull, and slide, press, pull, and slide. Chisel edge. Can you see that if I'm, okay, sliding it on there? All right, so that's those, those, um, I think that's all of them. Okay, so now to get the, um, I'm going to turn this around so you can see it the same way that I'm going to do it. Okay, so we've got the stem, so we're going to work on our chisel edge to pull in what would be the calyx to the flower. So load the same as what you were doing, maybe a little extra on the dark, and then what I'm going to do is kind of hold it on the side so you can see. So I'm just going to grab that chisel and just pull down. And now this time, I'm gonna do this one first because I wanna pull it in. Okay, this one's gonna come all the way down. Oops. And it's gonna run into the flower here. Okay, so I'm gonna be up on my pinky and I'm just gonna follow that and pull it into the flower and then you can clean up and add some more I need a little bit dark and then this one we're just gonna pull it down into there okay then I had um, there's a little leaf like coming off here got those. So the rest of them all have a touch of, um, actually I had three of them on that. So let's just add a little leaf here. And maybe we'll add one here. It kind of just depends on how big you paint. and what you need um, as a filler. Okay, so while we have the greens on here, what I'm gonna do is go over here and pick up just a little bit of red, and I'm gonna add it to the dark side, and then I'm gonna blend that in, and now I can come in and add some of those. I'm gonna get a little bit more red. And it just gives it a different um, shade in there. And you can go in and just fill in with these. Whoops, that was not blended. And if you want it um, more pronounced with the red,
you could just grab that red and work it in in a different area. See that? And some of these can overlap. So they're filler or um, what I have called sometimes filler or shadow leaves in the background. All right, so we've got, um, oh, I stuck my finger in it. So I'm gonna quickly try to take that off with some, with a damp towel. All right, so I'm gonna just add a few more of these over here. And they could even just be, um, I'll paint over that one. Some that are in there just, you know, like I said, as a filler. We've got a couple up here. Just don't stick your finger in it like I did. So add that medium to your brush. It sure makes it slide easier. And I think I'm going to add a couple on here. I like that red. just depends on if you want it to stand out more. Okay, we still need to put, um, I forgot my stem on this guy over here. Let me do a couple here real quick and then we'll Put that in. I like that one. All right, so I'm gonna grab some of the um, dark green. Get that back on that side and then pull in this. You see that? Then you could add a couple of little leaves just to kind of connect it. And remember, you can go over here on top. Whoops, that kind of took away my center vein there. All right, and I'm thinking that these leaves need more red in them. Also going to add um, some leaves up here just to kind of fill in that space.
Now, if you can't um, do the veins with the pulling just on the chisel edge, you can grab a liner brush and use that. I'm going to go over this one just because I think it needs something over here. We're going to add a little one on top. Trying not to stick my fingers. And let's add one more right here. Okay. We've got some up here. I'm thinking some more. I didn't make um, some of the flowers large like I did the one before because I drew it on versus using the pattern. Okay, so you may need to add some fillers here and there just to fill in your space. Maybe I'll just do curly cues over there. Okay, I'm going to leave it alone. Alright, I'm going to move this out of the way. We're going to do the centers next. Uh, so get the scruffy brush and really kind of open it up. You can even do that on your hand and what we're going to do is create a round or an oval shaped center with the lighter green on one side the dark green on the other and pouncing it in until it so pick up the citrus and then go grab just a little bit of the sap kind of pounce it in on your brush so that you have both colors kind of blended and then Kind of tap it. This particular brush is well used, so I'm going to tap it on the edge. You want to get that fuzzy. And if you need more of the dark, okay. Grab some more. Okay, let me hold it on the side so you can see. See how I'm just kind of tickling it just to get. So you can just tap it on the edge. citrus and I just kind of keep tapping it till I get it like I want it nice and blended and even it's better if you put it down where you can actually Okay, so it gives a fuzziness around the edge. Um, don't have anything to do on those buds, so clean that brush. And then what I did was I took some yellow and um, the tip of the liner brush. Clean that out later. Um, I'm 
going to use, you could use any yellow. This happens to be daffodil yellow that I'm going to use. And this one's a little thick, at least my bottle is. So what I'm going to do is uh, dampen your brush. This is the liner brush, uh, script liner. I'm going to grab a little bit of that medium to mix into that because it is so stiff. All right, and then I'm just going to tap. You can see I just kind of tapped in a C shape around those centers. So I'm going to go over here and just kind of tap, 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 just barely touching the tip of that brush. Now, we just did the green, so we may end up picking up some of that. You may have to go back and reload your yellow so that it doesn't keep grabbing all your green. This one I got a little heavy on one of those dots, so I'm just going to add a little bit of the uh, citrus back on there and then come back with the yellow again. So just barely tap it like a little pollen. Okay. Now, when you're doing your curly cues, um, now you can thin with water. Um, so just grab a little bit on your brush and make an inky mixture. And I'm just taking both greens and making a middle tone. And then pull it through. All right, so it really doesn't matter. Uh, they're mainly for fillers. So I'm gonna, I use my pinky to anchor myself and just twirl. One of the things that I say is um, when you're coming into the curve, lift it a little bit, not off the piece, but lift the pressure off of um, your piece. So push and then lift up, lift up, and let's go back this way, okay? And I'm thinking we need something over here. See how it's just a little bit lighter? And again, this can just be a, a filler where you need, so these may be completely different than what was on my pattern or piece. Let's 
let's do one over here. Okay. I think I've got everything on there. You put as much as you want on it, okay? It's uh, to your liking. And then now I need I like to use a smaller brush than most uh, to write my name. Okay, so this is the way I'm going to hide it. Not, a, not that it's really hidden, but I'm going to tuck it in. And again, I'm thinning with water, and I've just got a, uh, this is a one liner brush. And then I'm just going to write my name down here. And actually, I think I need more of the dark. So, so be sure and sign. You can even just put your initials. But you should always sign your work. I have been known to get in a hurry and forget. Okay, and it's up to you whether you want to date or not. I tend to put one online. Okay, I hope this helps you. Um, I'd love to see what you do. You can change up the colors on leaves or on the flowers, just as long as you're using a light and a dark. And when you blend the colors on the palette, it will make that other middle tone for you. Okay? All right, thanks for joining me. Okay, what I decided to do was, um, using that half inch or number 12, pick up the floating medium, a little bit of the black, and blend that in really well. And then I floated the darker color behind to create more separation. You don't have to have a lot of the color on your brush to do it, just very little. And then you can walk it behind. And the medium can be out here on the other things. It's not going to hurt that, but you can see how it just lifted. Um, you can also come down and uh, separate petals more if you wanted more definition. I mean, you can keep going and doing all kinds of things. Let's see how that brings out. Those petals. So you would follow your strokes You can see how it goes a long way. I'm hardly, I haven't added any more to my brush. But it just gives you some petal. And I'm just going to use what I have blended out here on my palette. I'm, I'm just picked up a little more medium is all I did. So this would be another addition to what you can do. You could do it out here if you wanted to. If you didn't like it, as long as everything underneath is dry, you can just take it down 
paper towel and uh, wipe it off. So I just barely have any black. A little bit goes a long ways. I think this one's pretty well separated, but we'll add just a little right there. Okay. So that's just another way uh, that you can enhance. You can I mean, feel free to put some, you know, on those back pedals even if you feel like it needs a little more than what you've got there. It's just a little tiny bit. That doesn't take much. Anyway, you can keep playing with it. All right, I'm stopping. Thank you.